if you were frustrated that uh, folks just straight up uh, did not cooperate with the January 6th committee, uh, you're not alone. Uh, there were serious people talking about a serious issue, and there were a bunch of treacherous clowns uh, that, that refused to participate. I am talking about when there was an attempted coup in the United States, and uh, <clears throat> much like the 9-11 Commission, the January 6th Committee, uh, was was tasked with finding out what happened and why so that it would not happen again. A lot of people didn't participate. Mike Pence uh, refused to participate, for example. Remember that as he, as he tries to claim that he is a patriot. He refused to participate. Peter Navarro, who helped plan the coup, refused to participate. And uh, it's been years, years, since uh, since they got in the way of uh, America uh, getting stronger, fixing itself. Well, we finally have an update on that because Peter Navarro has been convicted, convicted of contempt after defying the House January sixth subpoena. That's right. That punk right there, the guy who went on to Ari Melber's show and uh, bragged about what he called the Green Bay Sweep. That son of a bitch. Uh, excuse the language. Uh, he's been convicted. Let's, let's, let's read about this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and decline that offer. Thank you very much, AP. Trump White House official, this is from the Associated Press, uh, Navarro convicted of contempt after defying House Jan 6 subpoena. Trump White House official Peter Navarro was convicted Thursday of contempt of Congress charges for refusing to cooperate with a congressional investigation into the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. The verdict came after a short trial for Navarro, who served as a White House trade advisor under President Donald Trump and later promoted the Republicans' baseless claims of mass voter fraud in the 2020 election. Really want to, I think we get so used to seeing that phrase that we don't appreciate it. Baseless claims. As in, uh, Trump was lying. He has no reason. There is no base. There is no basis uh, uh, for believing the things he says. And he has been told many, many times that the things he says about the 2020 election are not true. And the reason he's been told this is because the things he says are not true. Trump is a liar. He is lying to you. He knows he is lying. And Peter Navarro knows he's lying. And Peter Navarro knew then that he was lying. Peter Navarro helped come up with the lies. He participated in an attempted coup. Here we are, years later, finally getting around to it. Navarro was the second Trump aide to face contempt of Congress charges after former White House advisor Steve Bannon. Bannon was convicted of two counts and was sentenced to a whopping four months behind bars though he has been free pending appeal. I mean, of course, they wouldn't actually dream, wouldn't dream of truly, genuinely bothering a conservative. No, 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 no. I mean, I know he's been convicted. I know, I know. And I know he was only given a couple of months, a couple of months, four months behind bars. But we can't bother a conservative. Steve Bannon's a conservative. Don't you understand? We can't, we can't bother him. He might become cross with us. Imagine putting a conservative in a gross place like a prison. That's for black people. Judge Amid Mehta scheduled Navarro's sentencing for January 12th. He was convicted in Washington's federal courthouse of two misdemeanor counts of contempt of Congress 
both punishable by up to a year behind bars. I hope he is put in prison. Why prison? Because that's where you go when you're so serving longer than one year. And I don't want him to get a year and a day. No, no. I want him to get the full two years. That's consecutive. Not concurrent. Consecutive. So that's what I'm looking for in sentencing. We have until January 12th if we want to affect this in any way. <laughs> uh, we might want to express uh, our feelings. Um, I think that uh, Navarro should probably spend the rest of his natural life in prison for what he's done, for his contempt for his fellow human beings. Uh, I don't think for this individual act he should be imprisoned for life, but I do think we should establish that what he did was the most blatant, the most obvious, uh, the most uh, uh, obnoxious version of this offense. We need to say this is getting the strictest punishment because this is the worst this offense can be done. This is the most serious scenario it could have happened in this contempt of Congress. This is the most contemptuous a person has been of Congress. This is uh, the most dangerous possible way you could, uh, you could be in contempt of Congress, and so you will get the maximum possible sentence. That is what we should do with Peter Navarro. I hope Judge Mehta understands that.